Hello everyone, welcome to uh, clone tutorial number two. Here we're going to talk about some more code. Let's go ahead and take a look at this. Okay, so pygame.net. Um, basically, this allows the pygame library to to uh, pull out the graphics. So if we put a graphic in, like maybe a tank for the player, it is telling Pygame that uh, we want that graphic essentially. So like up here we imported Pygame, but here we're telling Pygame to run. So it's like we have Pygame, but now we want to tell it to start working. And that that's what that is doing. Now the next line is we want to set the caption of the window. Basically, we want to put like a tile up there, and we're going to call it Rumble. So this way, whenever we run the module, um, in the upper left corner of the screen, it will go from Pygame window to Rumble. So that way, it displays the name of our game, and that's just that's pretty cool. So that is essentially what that is doing. Okay, now this is setting the background position. Now, this will not change the background just yet. We're going to have to put in some more code to make that happen, and that will, will be covered in tutorial number three. But essentially, this is setting it up for our background. So we are telling the program that we want the background to be this, but we're just not displaying it yet on the screen. We're simply defining what we want the background to be. Now I went ahead and named it space background dot png. Now essentially um, what you want to do is uh, let's go over here. Let's uh, go to open game art dot org. Okay, and then what you want to do is you want to type in uh, space background or just, you know, whatever background you want. And this is a really cool website. And then you can go in here and let's just say that you want this background, for example. Then you click on this. And whenever it opens up, um, you, you can look at like information, like does it need to be attributed or not? And a lot of this is just in the public domain, Creative Commons. But what you do is you copy the image and you open up paint and then you paste the image in and then at this point you want to save it. So you're going to save it as, um, let's see here, what did we save this one as? We saved this one as space background.png. So you want to type in space background dot png and then you want to make sure that it is in the correct folder so that way it works so um, in this uh, pi game I'm in Python 34 that's the folder I can head up one level and see that I'm under Windows C so when I save this, I want to go into Windows C, Python 34, and then I want to save the space background.png. And this way, it will be in the same folder as your, as your actual game. So like um, in this folder, okay, so like uh, if we go back over here, and this folder Python 34, we have the games, but we also have uh, the graphics. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, so we have space background.png, it's somewhere in here. And so you, you just want the graphic in the same folder as your game. Otherwise, it won't be able to, to reference. It, it won't be able to pull it up. So, so this right now, it's not going to actually change the background because we're simply creating it. 
but we haven't um, we have, we haven't specified in the actual game that that that's what we want displayed. Okay, so now we're going to set up some variables. We want the score to be zero when the game starts, and we want the top score to also be zero, and we want the level to be equal to one. So essentially, what we're going to do is we're going to do something like um, if the score were to equal 30, then level equals 2. If the score equals uh, 50, then level equals 3, and so on. So that way, the higher the score is, the higher the level becomes as well. And, and that would be key to our game later on. Um, and, you know, the, if the score equals 10, level could equal 2. So we, we could really make this anything that we want to make it. And we'll, we'll just define that later on. Okay, well, that is it for this tutorial. Well, actually, no, wait, no, wait. There is, there is one more part that I wanted to talk about. Um, yes, this is very important. Um, so this is the clock that we're setting. And it, this is like in case we want to put a timer on the game. Maybe, maybe we want waves of enemies and we want uh, five minutes on the clock. And then at four and a half minutes, we would want like another wave, wave of enemies. This is probably a bit more in depth than, than what we're going to do for this actual game. So this is more of a reference for what we could do in later games. But uh, you want to type in clock equals pi game dot time dot clock. So that way pi game will keep track of time as the game uh, progresses. Okay, well, that is, is all we're going to do for this lesson. And stay tuned for, for lesson number three.